whatever you do, don't take your time. Something happened. You looking for me? What? Nightmare. Keep her away from me. He's gone, Nurse Morley. Please notify the appropriate agencies. It was a very difficult surgery. It's probably my favourite um, horror movie, if not movie of any kind of genre movie, or not genre movie, just any movie of all time. Well, you can be certain that I'm going to give Shady Palms a glowing recommendation in my report now that I've seen how you helped Mr. Davis. That's why I became a nurse, Mrs. Chandler, because I like helping people. It's, you know, it's gorgeous to look at. You know, it's well-directed, well-acted. Where is Mr. Davis? Why, Mr. Davis is in therapy. I demand to see Mr. Davis immediately. You want to see Mr. Davis immediately? You want to see Mr. Davis with all his clothes off? Naked? I won't be put off. I want to see Mr. Davis immediately. Get back in bed, you nosy old bitch. If you don't take me to Mr. Davis and Mr. Badowski, I'll call social services. Get back in bed, you nosy old bitch. I have to say, uh, Nathan, um, I'm getting on board with all of these choices you're coming up with now. Hi, this is Hazel Tanksy from Blue Day Massacre, and you are listening to the Hysteria Continues. And indeed you are, if you're still listening after that. Uh, that <coughs> oh, I can't believe all of you loved it. <laughs> and you already said so, so it's it's done deal now. Hmm. I think uh, the more per- perceptive amongst you might have noticed that young Nathan has uh, done, um, is it, I think, what, what we call these days fake news. Yes. <laughs> no, it was not fake news. I'm, I'm fairly certain that y'all meant it about this movie. Well, well, as I as I said off air, um, uh, we should uh, not uh, tip our hat too early or show our cards. So Nathan's going to have to wait to find out whether or not we believe um, the uh, you know the Academy was missing a star when these films were released, or um, it is um, well. I I think well. Let's face it. it it's um, a double excrapaganza coming up. Uh, a classic Nathan choice of Death Nurse 1 and 2, which, um, yes, they didn't trouble the Oscars that year. But, Nathan, we're very excited to hear you try and make a case about why these films aren't just a piece of shit. Oh, I'm, I can, I'm very convincing. Okay, well, we look forward to that. But before, sorry, before we do, let's find out how we're doing. Nathan, how are you doing after making us sit through these two things? I'm stupendous today okay and serendipitous <laughs> um eric um how are you holding up i'm salubrious oh that's awesome mm. what about you joseph it's a huge shit sandwich and we're all gonna have to take a bite I think that uh, pretty much sums it up. Um, but having said that, again, let's keep an open mind because we may all turn on the penny and um, d- d- declare our love for Deaf Nurse 1 and 2. But let's wait until we've done in time on a tr- tradition the uh, recently seen. So, um, Eric, what have you been watching recently? Okay, I watched a uh, 1989 movie called Shocking Dark. This is directed by Bruno Mattei, who did Hell of the Living Dead and um, Rats Night of Terror, amongst others. Uh, It's written by Claudio Fragresso, and it stars Goretta Goretta, who was Rosemary in Demons. Um, This is the most blatant ripoff of a popular American movie that I've ever seen. In this case, it's Aliens. It's set in in Venice, of all places, which has become polluted in a sort of near-future dystopian universe. Um, And the pollution has made it uninhabitable. A team of engineers are sent in to try and make it inhabitable again, and they uh, are lost contact. And so a crew of military people are sent in, just like in Aliens, uh, led by Goretta Goretta and... uh, there they find, and here here's the list of things where it has in common with aliens, uh, humans cocooned in sort of white cobwebby stuff uh, who are begging to be killed. Um, 
there's a young, almost feral girl with soot on her face, uh, wearing sort of a, a rag, uh, a tattered old nightdress who runs around and she, she um, doesn't speak for about 30 minutes, just like Newt in Aliens. Uh, there's a character called Kane, like John Hurt's character in the original Alien. Uh, there's lots of wandering around industrial looking corridors. There's a scientific laboratory with mutant specimens in a jar that um, the lead character and the young girl get locked into the same room as. Um, it just goes on and on. I've, I just cannot believe that uh, Bruno Mattai wasn't sued for, because it's, it's certain sections of it are shot for shot remake of Aliens. Um uh, Oh, done with $50, of course. But uh, the thing, the funny thing about the film is in the last 10 minutes, it rips off Terminator as well. And it's actually uh, was titled Terminator 2 in, in certain uh, territories. Of course, it would have been released before the official Terminator 2 came out in 1991. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, it even rips off Jerry Goldsmith's score for the, that he did for the first Aliens mo- Alien movie. Um, it, was, it was fun and it was just <laughs> just gobsmacking to see uh, house. I, I mean, this is the kind of thing they do in Bollywood. I know they where they they kind of remake Nightmare on Elm Street, and that. I haven't seen any of them, but uh, I was just gobsmacked because the other film I was watching this week was uh, one that did get successfully sued by uh, Universal Pictures, and that was The Great White or um, The Last Shark. It's called. It's an Enzo Castellari movie from 1981, which uh, is less of a rip off, I think, but it's it's a killer shark movie, obviously, and it. it has the same kind of structure as Jaws, but it was successfully pulled from theatres in 1981. But uh, Shocking Dark should definitely have been removed. No, I'm glad it wasn't removed from the shelves, but I'm just gobsmacked it wasn't. Um, uh, yeah, so they were the two sort of Italian uh, rip-off movies I was watching this week. Both come highly recommended. Um, I saw Last Shark actually on Amazon Prime, which is my new streaming service of choice, because I've just found out that they have tons of um, Code Red and Vinegar syndrome titles in their uh, catalog there um so yeah um, big thumbs up for amazon prime much better than netflix ah controversial um what? <laughs> well no i was just saying it's controversial if you're a, hor- you're, if you're a horror fan hmm. i reckon check it, and you're in the uk and ireland i can't vouch for america but check out amazon prime because i've got some bizarre uh, not bizarre type just surprising titles like real hysteria continues type stuff in their catalog there Okay, right. Well, hopefully uh, you'll get a backhander from Amazon or nice. or, or the bear of your choice. Um, uh, I haven't seen either of those. I don't think I'm certainly aware of Shocking Dark and um, The Great White, but uh, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure. I might have seen Great White many years ago, but uh, maybe time to catch up with them. What about you guys, uh, Joseph and Nathan? I saw Shocking Dark many, 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 many years ago. Um, I don't remember it being a, a big alien ripoff, but I'll have to rewatch it. It is a big aliens ripoff, trust me. <laughs> okay. I may be thinking of something else. I don't know, but it seems like I have seen that. Mm. I yeah. haven't seen either one. They do sound yeah. like they might be up your alley, Nathan. Yeah. Nathan likes things up his alley. Yes. He does yes. Well, talking of Nathan, thank you, Eric. Talking of Nathan, what have you been watching uh, apart from um, n- Nurse Edith? Edith Mortley, mm-hmm. RN. Um, I watched uh, Criminally Insane and Crazy Fat Ethel 2 in preparation for my Death what? Nurse 1 and 2 extravaganza. Do you hate and- no, I love them just as much as I did when we first covered them. I mean, I just think they're so much fun. And as much as we did when we covered them, but just, yeah. What? I love them as much as I did back then as well, which isn't very much. <laughs> you said you like Criminally Insane. I listened yeah. to the old episode. Yes, Criminally Insane is not a bad movie. I will give you that much. Okay. but So that was a lot of fun. Uh, but we've already covered them, so there's not really much else that we can say about them except fantastic. Um, but I also watched a new movie called Triggered. I think we did. We all watch that. We did. I did anyway. I have okay. no. I I have not yet. I I still haven't gotten around to it, but I will. No, I must admit, I was going to watch it this afternoon, but I got caught up um, with some volunteering work, so we didn't get back until a bit later than we planned to. So I didn't have chance. I would have only had a chance to watch half of it, so I wouldn't think that was fair. But I will definitely watch it. So um, I I liked the you director's watched. last movie. So uh, um, I'm looking forward to. What watching was his this, last actually. movie? Uh, Bless the children. 
The, oh, okay, the, I haven't the, seen that one. Yeah, the one sort of the, the slasher set around an abortion clinic. Hmm. Controversial. Yeah. Um, should we wait, hold off until the? Yeah, I think we might should hold off till we all can discuss it, because you know it. We might give away important plot points. Well, that's true. But well, I will say, just yeah. preliminary before anybody else, like uh, so, people might can seek it out. Um, you know, it was pretty good. So um, can go further into detail on our next episode, which I think will be. I think our next pick is going to be Crazy Fat Ethel Part Two again, isn't it? Uh, no. Yeah. Mm. Well, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but anything else, Nathan? No. Oh, I sound very disappointed. But um, you can't live on a diet of um, Crazy Fat Ethel and uh, Death and Nurse movies, Nathan. It's not good for you. Well, I mean, I also throw in some Tarot Tin Killer and Last Slumber Party. Oh, oh dear. Well, that's not going to be a that's not a panacea for anything, is it? No. Right. That's so not, I've got I, don't know a, what, I don't know what panacea means, but panacea. If it's fantasy. Then yes. It's not panna cotta. Um, so, well, Joseph, how about you? I've not had time to watch anything lately, so nothing. It's uh, because you've got a new podcast, which you can well, tell. Well, that, that, and I've been working a lot, but it's, well, it's um, Ninja Terminators are our superiors. Yes, that's what it's called. And what was that we, about? The first episode was dedicated to the 1986, uh, I guess I want to call it Supernatural Karate Kid ripoff, No Retreat, No Surrender. Uh, so if you like those bad ninja kung fu karate action thriller, just silly movies from the eight, 70s and 80s, go give it a listen. It's on iTunes and YouTube. Excellent. But you spoil these movies like we do on this show, right? Well, yes, we actually spoil the entire film, um, and we, we just discuss it scene by scene. So, spoiler alert, there are massive spoilers. Okay. So, if you haven't seen No Retreat, No Surrender, then you probably want to watch it first. Yeah, I haven't seen yes. it. I'm definitely going to. I've never seen it either. It's quite hilarious. Hasn't it got uh, the muscles from Brussels in it? Yeah, Van Damme, he's the bad guy. It's his first uh, movie. Oh, well, he was in breakdance as well, on crutches, breakdancing. Breaking, I should say. So. Yeah, that's right. He had like a small cameo. Yeah. 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 I do have to uh, warn in advance, I've got uh, a kitten and a cat um, wrestling on the table while I'm recording. So anything could happen. Going to the lavatory. <laughs> well, I know. I wish they would. but uh, Oh, they didn't steal the heart for your surgery, did they? Uh, <laughs> no. Chase them around the table. Yes. Yes. Well, that's to uh, to come up shortly. But um, uh, just quickly, a couple of things that I did catch this week. Um, one was the the Endless, which is uh, a new movie um, about uh, two grown up brothers who escaped um, what they termed as a UFO death cult, uh, and they they go back for some reason to the the camp. Um, because one of the brothers is not getting on in the real world, as it were, and he goes back, and everyone at the death camp seems well, not death camp, but everyone at the at the camp uh, seems to be the same age they were when they left um, fifteen, twenty years before, uh, and so they so slowly start to come to realization that there may be the, the cult leaders were actually onto something. Um, I thought it was really good, actually. I thought it was um, you know really well done. Uh, it's possibly a little bit too sci-fi for Nathan, but it kind of it's it's more on the kind of the weird, wacky, and it's more kind of uh, Lovecraft kind of Cthulhu uh, influence than it is um, like a typical sci-fi movie. So, but also it actually has kind of some engaging characters and um, uh, likable characters, and it, it so it's it's a kind of like an indie indie sci-fi possibly with a pinch of horror uh, and fantasy thrown in and a bit of thriller as well. Um, it also had a kind of like the kind of hints of films like tri- time crimes, that type of uh, type of thing. So um, has anyone else seen that? No, but I, I keep seeing the, the trailer and bits and pieces for it appearing on my Facebook timeline. So it's getting a, a decent plugging <laughs> for one. For what better. movie was this? What was the this again? Endless. The Endless. Oh, uh, 
Do oh, Arrow? It sounds good with us. It sounds good. Yeah. I have to. Yeah, Arrow are it. bringing it out on Blu-ray yeah. very shortly. So um, there was that. And talking of um, Netflix, um, not Amazon Prime because I don't have that at the moment. But um, I saw a film. I took a chance on a film. Uh, I just looked quite interesting called Trash Fire. Um, and again, it's another new film. Um, and it was, um, it was, I thought it was really good. I mean, I always kind of look at the IMDb, uh, review sometimes before and just get an idea, but I never take them to heart because I know quite often, you know, I, in the amount of reviews you see of people say, this is the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. And, you know, it's, you have to take everything with a pinch of salt, but this was kind of like a jet black comedy, um, which I kind of appreciated. It was, uh, uh, it was filled with mostly horrible characters, um, but it kind of works in this kind of context. And it's kind of the basic story is um, like a really bitter web designer who is just kind of really rude to his girlfriend who finds out she's pregnant. Um, he He's kind of messed up because he he um, believes he, he killed his parents in a fire um, by not doing his chores properly and burnt his sister. So she was, became a recluse and was horribly disfigured. Uh, and um, his girlfriend uh, tries to get him to reconnect with his family, which is just his grandmother and his horribly disfigured sister. So he goes back to the house um, and uh, not much merriment uh, ensues. Um, but it's got a fantastic, the, the grandmother character is kind of like, I don't know if you've ever seen on that French film, I think we've talked about it before, like Tati Danielle, where you've got like the really evil old French woman who does things like shit herself at the, the, uh, the dinner table just just to Ew. piss off her daughter, I know. Um, but in this film, the grandmother is, is really, really fucking mental. Um, and uh, it's, it's really, really darkly comedic. And it's the only film where I've seen an old lady uh, flicking the bean to Bible TV. So if that sounds like your kind of film, yeah. if that sounds like your kind of film, then um, you no, should watch it. Does. it. Tra- Trash Fire? Is that Trash what it's Fire, called? yeah. It's on Netflix here too. So, yeah. oh, just, I got to watch this. I'm going to have to watch oh. it before the next episode. Yeah. It's kind of it's just very recommendation so far. <laughs> it's very darkly comedic in so much it's kind of jet black comedy and bits of it made us laugh out loud. It might not be to everyone's taste, but uh yeah, I thought it was American very film. well done. Sorry, American film, yeah. Although I think the grandmother's played by an Irish actor, actress. Um, but she was yeah. fant- she's amazing in it, and so so horrible. It's kind of if you imagine um, Kathleen Turner's serial say, mom. Sorry, I thought you were going to say it was me when you said oh, it's played by an Irish actress. I think her name is Eric Threlfall or something. <laughs> no, but okay. um, uh, I can't remember what I was going to say now. Uh, I lost train of thought. But anyway, oh no, I was going to say it's kind of like if you imagine serial mom who kind of um, got out of jail but got a hundred times more bitter. Then it's a bit uh, a bit like that. So uh, that is a kind of catch up of what we've been watching here at Hysteria Continues Towers. Um, and unfortunately, Just I don't. Mm. It, Justin, sorry. Um, it's been a while since we recorded a regular uh, version of the podcast. And uh, while we were away, the new trailer for Halloween came out for mm. the upcoming reboot. Yeah. Just wondering what, what everyone's thoughts were, yay or nay. I know it's old news at this stage, but. Well, I kind of guess it hasn't come out yet, has it? The film, obviously. It's not out no, until October. The trailer but, so the trailer. Probably. Um, I don't know. Well, let's start with Nathan. What were your thoughts on that? My thoughts were, yay. <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch another Halloween movie in the theater. So I'm very excited. Um, I thought the trailer was great. Um, but I don't, I try not to judge a movie off of its trailer any like anyway. So I'm going to remain cautiously optimistic because I love Lori Strode and I always knew that she didn't die and she didn't. So yeah. Mm. That's, what I, that's what I'm optimistic about for this new Halloween is that it's um, ignoring, it's, it's sort of rewriting the entire series, which they, I think they had to do at this stage because it's just getting too silly. Um, so I like the fact that it's a sequel to Halloween 1 and the rest didn't happen. Yes. Well, although I don't like the fact that we, now we have three, and three films in the franchise that are all called Halloween, mm. which I think is stupid. Which ones? <laughs> There's Halloween, Halloween, yeah. Zombies Halloween, and then this oh. Halloween. Yeah. Okay. All right. I guess you just have to. Maybe they could call this one H four O. They should have. Yeah. Well, what about you, Joseph? Are you you excited for it? Uh, I thought the trailer looked okay. Um, I I love the first two Halloween films. I'm not a huge like series fan, but it does look pretty good. Although I, I gotta wonder. It's like. 
he got shot six times by Dr. Loomis at the end of the original Halloween. And so her plan here is to, is basically to shoot him. I mean, look how well that worked out before. <laughs> well, I'm I thinking she's, that she's got her house booby trap too. Yeah. Yeah. Like blow him up or something. I mean, for, for God's sakes, I cut off his head. That the works. Guns just <laughs> no. to slow him down. It's just to yeah, slow but, him down so she can do other stuff. Yeah. But no, the, the trailer actually looked pretty good. I, I really liked, um, the, the series vice principles by Danny McBride. He also wrote this, this entry. So I think it, it might have that kind of feel to it. Uh, it's almost kind of right. Yeah. Danny McBride, it, the, the vice principal series had sort of this, uh, almost sort of like a retro feel to it, but it was set presently. So I'm thinking they might kind of carry that over to this, uh, this new Halloween film. And it might, it might actually work out. So I'm optimistic. I'm actually, I don't want to get sidetracked just yet, uh, but I did want to say to Joseph that Danny McBride has a new series coming out that I think you'll like where he plays a televangelist. It's a comedy. Oh, good. So oh, just uh, FYI. I'll check, yeah, I'll check that out. Um, what I like about the trailer, I love that scene where Michael is hiding in the clo- in the wardrobe or the closet. I thought that was quite effective. The mm-hmm. thing that, that maybe I'm worried about is that guy who goes to the asylum with the ma- who ha- holds up the mask to Michael. I hope he doesn't turn out to be another sort of man in black type character. I kind of got the impression from the trailer he was there to interview him, wasn't he? Or he'd been and he was trying to get a rise out of him. OK, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah, although Eric, coming off of that, and maybe I'm maybe I'm just guessing here, guessing the entire movie. But wouldn't it be kind of funny if, like, you know, Michael shows up to stalk Laurie, and she finally kills him, and then she takes off the mask, and it's that guy just playing a prank on her or something. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael's still out there. Jamie Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what? What's no, is that think? guy? That guy from the, the interviewer. That's who I was talking about. He was the one playing the prank on her. Hmm. What yeah. do you think, Eric? No, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, mm. Great to see Jamie Lee Curtis back, and as I said, I'm excited about the fact that they've ignored the other films, and it's a direct sequel to the first one. Like even the, even they mentioned in the trailer that it was just a, a you know an urban legend that she was Michael Myers' sister. So they've mm. even written that out of the history books. Mm. I kind of yeah. I mean, I'm excited for it. I'm kind of like I think it's uh, you know I'm definitely going to be uh, like a first nighter to sort of try and see it. But the only thing that kind of put me off slightly would be I kind of there seems to be the the kind of the extreme violence um, of the the film, i.e., some of the gore effects of people having their jaws ripped out and teeth, you know, they're st- thrown into the stool. Um, uh, things like that it kind of made me think more of like the Rob Zombie version rather than the John Carpenter one. But wow, is that the cats? Uh, no, no, it's um, a Stuart who's just getting some bread out of the oven. Uh, I asked <laughs> him to, to to do that, so he's uh, a glamorous assistant. Um, so uh, yeah, so I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be, um, you know, it'll be interesting. I mean, what they they do because they've already talked, they've already. Um, mentioned that they're going to they have an idea for another movie in the halloween franchise so uh, would that be I hope this doesn't mean that laurie dies in this one mm, well i don't know to me, here's the thing the only acceptable way to me for laurie to die is if her and michael die together and that's that like that's well, the I'm... only acceptable way to kill her off in my opinion I'm sure if she dies in this film, you'll just dream her back to life some way. It depends on how they kill her. See, the reason that I believe certain characters are still alive is I thought they died in very disrespectful manners. But for Laurie, like, let's say that she does like Dr. Loomis at the end of part two and like blows them both up at the same time. Then I'm willing to say, okay, they died. But, I mean, come on. It's not that hard to believe that um, she would survive being knifed and fall off a roof when Dr. Loomis can die in a huge explosion and come back with slight burns on his face. (laughs) Or Michael could come back from having his head chopped off. Yeah. That is all true. So, uh, well, let's wait and see. The proof will be in the uh, pumpkin-flavored pudding. So Tapioca. (laughs) So unfortunately, we um, we can't put it off any longer. Um, so no, unfortunately, <laughs> no, you cannot put it off, and you should be very excited about it. 
Okay, well, here is the trailer. Justin, you know what? Um, I've been looking at a lot of your photos on Facebook recently. They're very striking. Oh, Oh, please. Yeah, I like your photos too, Justin. And I like them as well, but I know what you guys are doing. (laughs) What's the weather like uh, where you are? Sunny. Hot and humid. It's supposed to rain. I'm really hoping it does. You know know what the funny thing is about rain? What's What's the funny thing? It's just, it's so great. You know what they say about sugar? <laughs> Town girl. Do you know what I've heard? It's really fun is uh, saying the alphabet uh, slowly. Should we try yeah. that? The listeners are going to love that. A. B. C B, B, would B. usually follow. Yeah. I guess we can't put it on off any longer. So a murderous nurse and her brother run a medical clinic out of a suburban home that they share. They take in patients and kill them, continuing to build a state for their care. However, a plucky young county inspector, Faith Chandler, threatens to complicate things for Edith and her brother. So, um, Death Nurse is uh, the follow-up. I mean, it's not really related to Criminally Insane and Crazy Fat Ethel 2. It's the same cast, but it's It's technically a different movie. huh? It's the same film. No, no, it's not the same. It is. Death the Nurse, it's it's Death Nurse is not killing people film. for food. Continue. Um, so um, they, so you got Edith, and her brother Gordon is the doctor, and he really wants to operate on people. So this is the perfect chance uh, to run this clinic where he can do operations, and then, of course, it kills the people, and they just feed the people to the rats in the basement, and then they'll kill the rats and feed those to the patients. I mean, it works pretty well, I would say. You know, it's um, a decent way to uh, make a little extra money on the side, which, you know, they bill the county for a lot of stuff. Um I love that at the beginning of this movie, Dr. Gordon and Edith are performing surgery, and he's got – it's basically a hand towel tied around his face, and that's his surgical mask. Um, and I love um, when the uh, Mr. Davis comes in and he has tuberculosis, and he's coughing. He can't stop coughing whatsoever. But as soon as Faith Chandler leaves – uh, Edith gives him a really mean look, and he just stops coughing. So I think Edith has found a cure for tuberculosis. Um, I absolutely love that they're able to fool Faith Chandler later because they've killed Mr. Davis, and um, she needs to check on him. So basically what they do is have Dr. Gordon lying on the floor. Thank you, dogs. Uh, lying on the floor uh, beside his bed and just kind of crudely wave his hand every time that Faith Chandler's talking to him. And then later, Faith is like, oh, wow, his color looks much improved. Um, And that's kind of ironic since he's dead. Um, uh, It's interesting to me that nobody seems to actually defend themselves when they're attacked by Edith. They just kind of stare at her while she stabs them to death. So, I mean, nobody seems to try to do anything remotely to defend themselves. I guess they don't have that survival instinct that they should have. Um, and I never quite understood why Faith Chandler decided to just randomly check herself into this clinic. I mean, she works for the county social services. Why? Hey, Boomer. Um, I just don't know why she felt the need to check herself in unless it was to investigate the disappearances of Mr. Davis and Mr. Badowski. Um, and then there's the heart surgery scene. Oh, dear. I mean, uh, a cat steals the heart, and they have to chase the cat down to get the heart back. That was just craziness to me. So this movie, I thought, was a lot of fun, awesome. Uh, I've seen it many times. I will probably see it many more. Um, But I think I'm going to see what Joseph has to say about part one. You know that saying, if you can't say anything nice, you shouldn't say anything at all? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, to hell with that bullshit. Um, wow. This movie is like an, like fi- not even an hour long, and um, let's just say it feels like a couple of hours. Uh, right off the bat, the editing is just hilarious because th- there's so many scenes. Like there's one scene where they're chasing this cat around a table in the kitchen, and basically um, 
they do this for like a minute and then they show one they they cut to one scene of the cat sitting stationary and then back to them still chasing the cat around and um it just goes on and on like that they'll loop back on themselves like they'll show a scene uh like she'll say get in bed you nosy old bitch and then the lady will say something then it'll kind of loop back around on itself and she says it all over again um it just constantly things like that now um I also want to also. Oh, hello! Somebody is knocking. Anyway, I also want to mention the uh, the incessant need to pad out the running time uh, with the criminally insane uh, clips from before. They kind of crowbar it. They crowbar it into this film's quote unquote narrative. Uh, they eliminate her need to eat from the criminally insane films. But they, uh, I guess, here what Nathan had said is that maybe it's showing that even back in her younger days she was thinking of death. While well, I was thinking of death while watching this film. Uh, that ha- having said that. I wasn't bored by this film. I, I laughed quite a lot. Um, although I don't, I'm not sure if that was the film's intention was to make me laugh, but it did. Uh, so on that note, I'm going to recommend death nurse, but wow. only if you like, only if you like to riff on very bad movies and luckily this one's under an hour. So you, if you know, if you go in with a good sense of humor, you'll have fun. Uh, but I'm not going to recommend death nurse as a movie at all. Because I don't think it's a movie. I think it's just uh, crap on a tape. It, funny crap on a tape, but it's just crap on a tape. It's not really a movie to me. Um, so I can't recommend it on that, you know, on, the, on a cinematic level at all. But if you like bad films, I do recommend it. So I am split down the middle, and you can play a sound clip from Kenneth Williams if you want to. But that's my opinion on Death Nurse. Oh, and a very good opinion it was. <laughs> I didn't have a Kenneth Williams clip. So <laughs> what was that? It's a, a sad Sound balloon like... deflating. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's well. That's good. I like that. What about you, effect. Justin? Well, um, I, I I agree with um, Joseph's sentiment, and you know, saying if you can't say say anything nice, then don't say anything at all. Um, but I will say something nice. This wasn't the worst movie I've watched this week. Uh, it, the worst movie I watched this w- week was its sequel, Deaf Nurse 2. Um, Deaf Nurse, I think, uh, I I appreciate it exists. Um, there were bits in it that made me laugh, but essentially it's kind of a home movie, isn't it? Um, or just, uh, I, it's difficult. It's like Joseph is saying, it's not really a movie. Um, it's kind of, uh, you've got... I don't know how to describe it really, but you know, it's, it starts with a scene where you've got, um, uh, you know, the doctor digging, um, obviously a grave, and then you've got like more or less five minutes of him eating breakfast. Uh, I, I, you know, and to, to pad out a 60 minute running time. Um, I, I would love to know exactly what his thoughts were, why he made the movie like he did, whether or not it's, he, you know, he's trying to make a good movie or it was just a bit of fun or w- what it was. I don't know. And I know his wife was in it um, and her father and well, her father and basically neighbors and people like that. And of course, you know, I, I like the, um, you know, the woman, uh, what was her name? Who's playing Priscilla? No. Uh, who played Nurse Edith? Priscilla, Priscilla Alden? Pr- yeah. Priscilla Alden, sorry, yeah. I mean, she's the best thing in it, but I mean, she's still, uh, you know, I, I, you know, she's, I, you know, for the 42nd time when she does a death stare, um, it kind of gets a little bit old for me. I kind of, I, you know, I, it's, I like films that are so bad that they're good and sometimes films that are so bad that they're bad, but I found i you know i i found that they only really picked up after the 60 minute mark for me um so the end credits well yeah, yeah. i mean to be honest it's, be- it's better than death nurse 2 it's kind of it has a bit more to it than that i mean i thought death nurse 2 was really difficult to watch and by the you know i i just i lost all interest in that I, i'm just being honest um I I think it's a bit of a joke stretched, um, you know, too thin over 60, well, 120 minutes for both of them, because essentially they are the same movie. 
Um, and he kind of stole the idea of the um, what they're doing from uh, uh, Blood and Lace, which um, is one of those a film we've covered on the podcast, which I think is a lot, lot better. But, you know, it's a Nathan pick. I knew what I was getting myself in for. You know, I could have um, changed my identity and moved to a completely different country, but I didn't. I did watch them. So I have no one to blame but myself. Yes, and you're welcome, by the way, for getting to watch it. Um, Eric? Well, they say um, for, forewarned is forearmed, and I think that helped me in this situation, because after having seen Crazily Fat Ethel 2, which we covered, I think it was ages ago, must be five years ago, so I kind of knew what to expect with Death Nurse 1 and 2, and it did deliver exactly what I was expecting, which is dialogue that's done in a really deadpan, monotone way, a plot that's you know thinner than Posh Spice, um, and there's all that flashback footage to criminally insane to pad out the running time. Um, poor old Edith seems to spend a lot of time asleep on the couch, dreaming about the same scenes over and over again from criminally insane, where she's uh, chopping people up with a meat cleaver, which are far more interesting than anything that happens in the Death Nurse movies. Um, at the start of the film, I thought that when she answered the phone and said the name of the clinic, I thought she said shitty palms. And I thought, oh, that, that's kind of funny. I didn't realize until later that it was actually shady palms. Um, it was a clinic where they, it, like, Edith and Gordon never factor in that there's a possibility that a relative, a selfish relative might come along, along looking for, you know, one of the patients that they've, they've bumped off. Um, there was some moments I did enjoy in it. Um, I did enjoy that scene where they're chasing the cat around the table and it cut, keeps cutting to sort of footage of the cat stationary on the ground eating the heart. And yet they're still running around the table as if they're trying to chase him. Um, I also like the fact that Edith is obsessed with her sherry bottle, which reminded me of a certain gothic friend of ours. I think you know who we mean. Um, well, Andrew I also Eldridge. That the, sorry? Andrew Eldridge. Yeah, Andrew Eldritch from Sisters of Mercy. That's mm. who I'm thinking of. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that this clinic is so obviously a suburban house um, and all the uh, sort of wards or hospital rooms look like um, just normal bedrooms with gaudy 80s wallpaper on them. And uh, the clinic appears to very much be in the middle of a housing estate. Um, as Nathan said, that weekend at Bernie's scene where the inspector calls around and they have to get the body back into the bed and make him look like he's alive. That was kind of fun, I suppose. Uh, I got a great laugh out of um, the character Louise. Uh, she's the alcoholic patient who's been treated for her alcoholism by being given copious amounts of brandy and sherry and whiskey. Um, but she looks just like Gary Glitter, which is a reference I don't know if you guys would get in the States. But he was a big glam rock star of the 70s who, um, uh, let's say, ended up in prison in the uh, 90s for various yeah, I know who Gary Glitter is by his hair alone. Yes, well, Louise has the <laughs> hair. Um, um, and then, uh, oh yeah, the extended sequence of uh, Gordon uh, getting the ice cream out of the freezer, uh, scooping it into a bowl, closing back up the box of ice cream, putting it back in the freezer, then eating the ice cream out of the bowl. It seemed to go on for about 20 minutes. Um, I liked Faith Chandler as well. <laughs> walking around in the unsexiest um, nighty you'll ever see, uh, walking around for like 15 minutes as well, it seems. Uh, the film felt very much like one of Nathan's short movies that he put up on YouTube, which is a compliment, Nathan. Um, I was a kind of half expecting um, one of the patients to come out and go, death nurse, death nurse, it's over. And then for death nurse <laughs> to jump out and go, it's not. Um I also like the tracking errors on the film because it was shot on VHS and I'm assuming they are actually built into the um, they're actually there on the master print of the movie and they're not, not just a flaw of the copy we were watching um, overall yeah definitely not something I would ever watch again uh, it made like as Joseph was saying 56 minutes felt sort of four times as long I mean it's it's a curiosity piece for sh sure but yeah, it, as the boys were saying, it's, it doesn't feel like a film at all. It feels like it was improvised on the spot. Um, it feels like all the cast are friends who are roped in against their will uh, just to appease their, their you know, father or uncle or whoever it is. Um, yeah, it just didn't add up to too much for me. But, you know, I, I it's not the worst film we've covered. It's probably... So the third or fourth worst, but it's not the worst. At least it's not the worst. Yeah, I was I was saying, couldn't they have roped in someone to do foley on this? Because there's like no sound effects. Like every time someone gets stabbed, it's like, and then like they're dead. 
<laughs> Complete well, silence. Complete Edith silence. grunts when she's stabbing. Yeah, but when they're stabbing, it's it's the, the the knife doesn't seem to make contact, and if it does, it's sort of it's just a, it's just a light tap, really. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys feel bad for Faith Chandler because I think she cared about her patients, and then unfortunately she died. Yeah, that was really uh, unfortunate. But I was kind of yeah, wondering, sure. do, you, do, do you, in America, I mean, back then, would they have actually had social services bringing people with bronchitis or whatever to um, to a private clinic? Doesn't seem yeah, I think so. Like tuberculosis, that's pretty <laughs> contagious. I don't know yeah. why you take them to like that kind of a clinic. Hmm. I kind of wish I had tuberculosis after watching this. <laughs> I think it gave me tuberculosis. <laughs> no, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. No. Uh, uh, well, I didn't hear a word you said, Eric. I just heard the. I just heard you say. I was no. wondering: is tuberculosis not obsolete in this modern world? I don't know. Is it, no. is it something that's sort of not? What am, what am I fucking Doctor Feelgood? How the hell should I know? <laughs> well. <laughs> Wow, somebody's touchy after watching Death Nurse one and two. You think you'd be happy? Yeah, yes, and I just, I just watched, I just watched these right before we recorded, so <laughs> I'm fresh off the JJ. Yes, yeah, so yeah. the pain is still raw. Yeah. <laughs> well, shall we get into some backgrounds? Yes, because we've got another one to cover. Yes, <laughs> we do. Um, we do with the joy. Yes, very much. Um, John Davis was played by Nick Phillips, who directed the film. Louise is his real-life wife, and Faith Chandler is his real-life mother. It was filmed in his house at the time. No, are you sure it's not a real hospital? Well, I, I thought <laughs> it could have been, but then I saw the extras on the DVD that I own, uh, which, incidentally, is autographed by him. It's one of my prized possessions. Um, and... Yeah, I mean it was um, it was a it's a fun disc. A- anybody should check it out. Is that from the, the slasher video? Yes, Release. slasher video. Hmm. I want to make a Death Nurse three, but unfortunately, as we all know, Priscilla Alden has passed away, and I just don't know that anybody else could actually be Edith Mortley. Plus, I would want to have uh, another Chandler sister, and unfortunately, his uh, mother has passed away as well. Yeah, I don't. I don't think anyone wants to be Edith Mortley hmm. or Faith Chandler. <laughs> or Faith. I want Eric to put on a wig and play my Edith Mortley in mine. Okay, if you insist. But do you okay. think? Do you think it um, says anything that uh, the people who appeared in his films were have died off, so they didn't have to be oh, any more? <laughs> well, I feel they were kind of older uh, at the time anyway. I mean, years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been, it's 87. So it's over 30 years ago. Yeah, I know. Time flies, except when, when you're, you're watching fun. these movies. Yeah. Unfortunately, not, not so with watching these. <laughs> no. <two. laughs> so, so a bit more background then. Um, well, that's what I have. So what do you have, Justin? Uh, well, I think um, I, you've, you've got most of the backgrounds um, that I was going to say, apart from uh, I was gonna, I've already mentioned it, it kind of ripped off um, Blood and Lace, uh, which was the Gloria Graham starring Sicky from 1971, was it, where, they, where she ran an orphanage um, where they bumped off the kids and um, collected money from the uh, social security or so, social services. And um, they had dead kids that pretended they were alive. So I think that must've been the main inspiration for this film. Um, whether or not it's true, I, I don't know, but it um, uh, apparently also starred his uh, stepfather um, was in it. Uh, it it um, apparently was shot on a consumer grade VHS camcorder um, and was edited. I find that hard to believe. I know, I know, I know. And was edited by uh, linking two VCRs together. Now, whether that's true, I don't know, or it's a nasty rumor. I'm not sure, but uh, there you go. I've so. got some more behind the scenes here. 
Mm. That hasn't been mentioned. Okay, so the film was shot in the summer of 1986 under the title The Nasty Medic, and it had a budget of $4.5 million. It was picked up for distribution by Paramount Pictures in the summer of 1987 and released as one of their tenpole titles that year. Uh, They released it to 2,200 theatres on July the 17th, 1987, which was the same weekend as Robocop. <laughs> one. Uh, it earned a very healthy 18.2 million on its opening weekend and it went on to gross 73 million worldwide and in 1988 <laughs> it became the third best selling VHS of the year which is why the inevitable sequel happened so soon afterwards um, Sigourney oh, Weaver how lovely. Soon, but she left the project to create differences and uh, the theme music was called um, the. It's an instrumental version of a song called "Make Mine a Courgette," and it's performed by Wibble Wobble Pants and his fantastic teapots. Oh my God, that's like the best background information we've ever had on the show. <laughs> wibble Wobble Pants, I love it. <laughs> wibble Wobble. That's all the background. Do you have any background, Joseph? <laughs> How could I after that smorgasbord you just gave us? Oh. <laughs> True, it's on Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh, and I have some more. Um, it features clips from uh, Criminally Insane, which was a film by the same filmmakers. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Pretty cool, eh? And do you have a theory, Nathan, why there was all those flashbacks, apart from the padding out? Oh, yes. Hmm? Yes, I do. Um, so I think the reason that Edith is having these dreams is I feel like she's conflicted because I think that she yearned for like, because, you know, in the dreams, you see Edith as a younger person and she's wearing this red flowing gown with all these jewels on her hands and stuff. I think that she, um, you know, the, the, the dream signifies that she like longed for that kind of life, which is why she's like running this uh, clinic and billing because she's trying to like earn the money to have that kind of life. But she also has this murder aside and that's why she dreams about the murder. And I think the murder um, she try she's trying to combine the two money and murder, but unfortunately um, she just gets a little sloppy because as we know at the end of death nurse part one, I'm going to spoil it. A cop finds the dead bodies in the, um, the basement and there's a really um you know climactic moment where edith sees that they've been busted and she sits down on the couch it's so exciting (laughs) i couldn't chain my excitement i know i know the the other thing i couldn't quite work out was the uh you had the basement where the rats were but when the cop turns up and opens up the garage door it's not the basement uh, maybe they just call it the basement, but it's actually a garage. Oh, it could be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. 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 Did, I'm did so we... glad. I'm so glad Nathan's parents decided not to reproduce again. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, admittedly, I've always thought of myself as one of a kind as well. So thank that's, you. That's true. Yes. Um, did the, the only other thing was um, I did read somewhere that uh, the rat scenes. When I say rat scenes, it's actually the same scene of two rats on the floor repeated uh, about forty-five times. Uh, that it was um, lifted from Willard. Oh, really? Oh, it's definitely yeah. lifted from a, a, a thirty-five or sixty mil source because it turns from VHS to film. Right. Mm-hmm. I like that Edith has named these rats because she goes down to kill one because, you know, she serves a rat to Faith Chandler and she goes down to kill one. And she's like, Harold, get away. Get away from that, Harold. So that's, you know, her Nathan, names. Mm-hmm. Nathan, is there a possibility that Death Nurse is a sequel to Crazy Fat Ethel because maybe she has changed her name and she's striking out with a new venture and that's why she keeps having the dreams of criminally insane? I don't know if that would be the case because I think we would see a lot more of Edith eating, and we really don't. I mean, Edith seems more concerned about sherry than Gordon, food of any source. Gordon eats more. Yeah, Gordon He's eats more than Edith does. Sex change. Or maybe hmm. she's um, had a gastric Crazy band fact. fitted. Maybe that's what it was. Have you ever tried sherry, Justin? Yes, of course I have. Yes. How was it? It's, it's nice. I, I don't like sweet sherry. I kind of like uh, sort of a, a, a dry Spanish sherry. But we drink it it's in, mainly, in England. Yeah, it's mainly for cooking, isn't it? No. Well, no, you get cooking sherry, but no, sherry is kind of like a, um, uh, it's a kind of uh, fortified wine that you have at Christmas time in the UK. Mm. 
I feel like really I should nice know ones. this because that's all they drink on uh, Fraser. I feel like I should know this information, but I don't. It's nice. Mm. Uh, you wouldn't want to drink. You wouldn't want to drink much of it. You drink very small glasses of it. It's kind of like more of like an aperitif or, or a, mm. you know, it's not like a, it's not like a drink. Not something you would drink lots of. I must well, say, this, Louise. Uh, yeah. this uh, this discussion on uh, ports and vintages is is, <laughs> is uh, much better than what we just discussed. Well, we still have. We're only halfway through, aren't Part we? Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey. okay. So, Nurse Edith Mortley and her brother continue to operate the Shady Palms Rest Clinic, admitting indigent street people while billing the county double for their care. After promptly abusing and killing the unsuspecting patients, gobs of blood flow and the body count begins to rise. Even the rats in the basement have difficulty devouring all the cadavers. Things begin to sour when the twin sister of one of the murder victims shows up looking for her missing sibling. Don't miss this grisly sequel to Death Nurse as the cleaver and butcher knife wielding Nurse Mortley returns again to inflict murder and mayhem upon her suffering victims. Wow. Wow. That's a great description for this movie. Um, so Death Nurse 2 picks up right where Death Nurse 1's leaves off, where Edith sits down on the couch and the cop, you know, comes back to the door and knocks on it. But I think that she got her second wind or something, because when she opens the door, she's already got a knife and she stabs the cop to death. Um, and, you know, he he dies, which, you know, is very tragic. Um and as the description I read said, Faith Chandler's uh, plucky young sister, Charity Chandler, shows up. And she's trying to find out what happened to her missing sister. And she turns amateur detective to try to find her sister, Faith. Unfortunately, she ends up meeting the same fate. Uh, whereas Faith was stabbed in the back to death, Charity stabbed in the front to death. Um, I felt really bad for Charity, just like I did for Faith. I'm like, man, if only one of them could have lived. Sad day. But um, we do get um, a new patient who looks like she could be Louise's twin sister, although that's never mentioned. Uh, Her name is Brownie. And in a startling turn of events, Nurse Mortley finds herself being chased around the living room table by someone with a knife. And I was like, wow, that's the first time I've ever seen anybody go after, you know, Nurse Mortley. Or even like if you were going to say Ethel, for example, um, from the uh, uh, cr- criminally insane and crazy fat Ethel too. Nobody really goes after her either. So I'm like, that was kind of a different, you know, thing. Although she ends up getting killed as well. Um, well, actually, she gets attacked first because Nurse Mortley stops and says, "Hey, I got some sherry. Won't you put that knife down? We'll have a drink." And Brownie's like, "Okay." And then, but then you got to remember earlier, Brownie called Edith a bag of SHIT, which is kind of mean. But I mean, Edith did call her the B word, so I guess it's kind of appropriate. Um, so Brownie goes and gets attacked and thrown into the cellar. But the twist is she's not dead. And later she comes back and attacks Dr. Gordon. But then she gets a cleaver taken to her. Crazy times. Um, it's interesting to me that Faith, uh, Chandler's sister, apparently is the only relative of any of the victims that seems to show up and want to know what happened. I mean, you got to remember in part one, they kill like the a health inspector that comes by to shut them down. They kill, I mean, they kill a cop. I'm like, where is everybody to investigate this? It's like nobody really seems to care. Um, and, but aside from Brownie, uh, pretty much again in this movie, everybody allows Ethel or Edith, I should say, not Ethel allows Edith to kill them, you know, without much of a fight. Hey, Boomer. Um, so I mean, I I love this film as well. I do say if I had to compare them, I would probably prefer, prefer death nurse one because, uh, I felt that it probably had a little more oomph. To it, it had a certain Juno Saqua, and I thought that the sequel, um, I didn't like what they did with Dr. Gordon. I mean, he gets attacked earlier on and spends most of the movie laying in bed. So, I mean, there is a funny scene where Edith brings him his food, and he's afraid that she's serving him rats. And she's like, oh, don't worry. Rats are just for the patients. Um, you know, and again, this is a movie where uh, Dr. Gordon eats more than Edith does. 
Crazy times. All right. Um, what do you think about Death Nurse Dose, Eric? Death Nurse Dose. Well, let's be frank. Um, well, we'll let, I'll be Eric. You can be frank. Um, <laughs> it's pretty much more of the same, is it not? Um I found the film, two films, kind of interchangeable. Uh, it's very much somebody shows up at the door, um, the nurse does that death stare that Nick Justin was talking about, and then they get killed maybe three or four minutes later. Uh, this just seems to be the re- the um, repetitive structure of these films. I did like the character of Brownie, though. She was kind of a John Watersy type character, um, where she uh, she's kind of like the rhubarb lady, actually. Um, uh, and you know, I do like that scene where, again, I mean, it's a recurring motif in this guy's films. Because in Crazy Fat Ethel 2, in Death Nurse 1, and now in Death Nurse 2, there's always a scene of somebody being chased around a table in kind of a camp and pantomime type way. Um, you know, it's not exactly John Carpenter style suspense or anything. Um, but again, it's 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 punctuated with just so much padding. I mean, we have more scenes of criminal, not more scenes of criminally insane. The same scenes of criminally insane are shoehorned in here. But also, um, you know, the action sequences of, um, you know, a 45 minute sequence of Edith sharpening the meat cleaver or the 77 minute sequence of her watering the plants or the 29 minute scene of her using the oversized calculator in her office, which looks suspiciously like her bedroom. Um yeah, so again, as as uh, I think Justin alluded to, it's worse than Death Nurse 1, in my opinion. Um, probably because it's just more of the same. And at that stage, I just was craving for something a bit different. Um, and I didn't get it. Uh, I I don't know what the background is. I'm, I'm assuming the two films were shot back to back on the same weekend um, and then released a year apart. Uh, but yeah. And it ends on exactly the same beat as the, the first movie, which is... Uh, Edith sitting on a couch, looking sort of into into space in sort of a forlorn manner. It it like the, the film doesn't have a climax as such. It just um, it's like when you're in school and you're asked to write an English essay that, uh, that's 1,500 words, and you you just keep writing, writing, writing till you hit the 1,500 word mark, and then you just stop. And this is what this feels like. It's like they had a sort of 57 minute um, target to hit, and when it got to that point, it said, "Okay, that's the end." Um, yeah. Uh, Death Nurse 2, Death Nurse 1. Won't be watching them again. I probably got more of a kick out of Death Nurse 1 if if there was a kick to be had from either film. (laughs) Um, But, uh, yeah. Thank you for bringing them into our lives anyway, Nathan. You're welcome. What about you, Justin? Um, Well, um, (laughs) as as I already uh, alluded to, as Eric said, I thought Death Nurse 2 was uh, was worse um, than Death Nurse 1. I yeah I, to be honest I kind of I just being honest I kind of lost all interest in it um fairly early on it just it was it was very repetitive I can't really see the, I couldn't see the point of it really if I'm being charitable um it, it it's yeah it, it, I I don't know it was kind of you know give me Ray Dennis Teckler if you want a bad movie or you know and Andy Milligan or somebody I mean it's it's just I it, it, mm, I, it, the, the joke of um, Priscilla Alden uh, being a murderous nurse—it just kind of it, could, it stretched thin over sixty minutes in the first movie, and then in the second, just the second movie was just more of the same with you know endless um, recounting or kind of just um, flashbacks to Crazy Fat Ethel for no real reason. It kind of—I didn't really—I didn't really understand the point of it, if I'm honest. Um, it was kind of like. Uh, it kind of made like Doris Wishman look like Steven Spielberg, if I'm if I'm honest. Um, I, what, if I could say some nice things about it, and I always like to say nice things about things, as you know, Nathan, and I'm sure you appreciate that, is I did like the the character of um, of Brownie. Um, I thought she was quite fun, and was she not the same actress as it was not his wife again, wasn't it? She was. Yeah, it's his yeah. wife again. Yeah. So um, I, I thought the the kind of the special effects were even more inept in the sequel than they were in the the first one, um, and uh, I like the fact that when Brownie stabbed Gordon uh, in the back repeatedly, that he had just some minor scratches. Um, but uh, when um, the Nursey kills Brownie, I, it's kind of they. The, the, as you kept on seeing throughout there was like no it was just kind of it, it was you know like pretend stabbing like you would do if you were like a, 
a 10 year old child playing with your friend like a, a murder game um and then you squirt a bit of ketchup on it and then mush it around i i, I don't know i kind of nathan i can see why you would love these movies uh and i really appreciate that you do and i really admire the fact that you are holding a light aloft for these kind of films but i'm not a fan of the deafness movies i like eric i think i preferred crazy fat ethel i thought was um uh was was actually quite quite good in a lot of ways um certainly insane do you just or do you mean crazy fat ethel part two sorry do you mean criminally insane? Oh, criminally insane. Yeah. 70s? Yeah. Sorry, criminally insane. But that wasn't, that wasn't, was that not released as Crazy Fat Ethel as well? I don't know. I can't remember, but it was, it was actually a real movie though, as far as I recall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it had kind of, yeah, I mean, it had all the elements. I mean, he made loads of movies, didn't he? I'm sure Nathan can, uh, can um, help us out on this because he, he made, well, there was, I was looking at his IMDb profile and it was kind of, there was about five or six movies put out around about this time um were they all got this kind of quality nathan um i think it varied um i haven't seen all his movies though um i mean he's done a lot though he did you know cemetery sisters which i also believe was shot on video um, it doesn't have um edith mortley in it uh, priscilla alden i should say but it does have the guy that played dr gordon in it he's you know, a brother's that um, uh, there, he also did Satan's Black Wedding, but that was back around his criminally insane days. I feel like once he got into the late eighties, he did a lot of just shot on video stuff. Whereas his seventies work was more along the lines of criminally insane. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I, yeah. I think, you know, I'm glad that I've watched them because it means I never have to again. So, but I wanted to reviews on Mysteria Lives. Yeah, well, maybe one day. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you, Joseph? Okay, this might be this might shock you, but there is one clever, very clever moment in uh, Death Nurse Two. It's it's uh, basically how Edith is basically ho- hoisted by her own petard with the with the rats. Um, basically getting pushed out of the house because there's too many bodies, and it's what gives her away uh, to the cop at the end. Having said that, that's the only thing I giggled at in this film. This, this, The Death Nurse movies have one gag, and we pretty much get that in the first five minutes of the first film. So the fact that these are stretched out over two films is really kind of maddening. I also didn't laugh as much this time around as I did in the first film. Um for one, they not only are they still doing the whole criminally insane uh, flashback footage, but now they're actually doing flashback footage to the first Death Nurse film. And it's just it's so maddening just to sit here and, and just watch this just over and over when we got the joke uh, within the first five minutes of the of the first film. Yeah, I mean, I laughed at the first film. I didn't really laugh at this one. I was just kind of like, OK, um, let's get let's get to the end credits, please. Uh I'm not a big fan of these shot on or shit on video films. Um, <laughs> they just they don't really do anything for me. I I need suspense. I need um, I need competency of some sort. Even some sound effects would have helped. I mean, there's like no foley in these movies whatsoever. There's no oomph. It's just it's just a big twat waffle. And uh, I don't know. I just. <laughs> I, 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 I like Justin. I'm glad we watched them just so we can get them out of the way. And um, yeah, let's move on. Let's uh, well, uh, just wait till yeah. what you see. I, when I, what I'm going to pick next. Oh, God. Hang God. on. <laughs> we we sat through these turds for you, your benefit. <laughs> you have to have something ha- that resembles a movie in the next one. Well, I told y'all my next Patreon pick is a movie, and actually Joseph said he liked it. Um, yeah, I actually, yeah, that one is pretty good. I remember. Hmm. Is that a real film with like sound and music and uh, like a plot? Yes, 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 yes. It has a plot. It's a very bizarre plot, but it's a good plot and has a great ending. So, okay, what, what question? For... Catch. <laughs> what? Huh? What? Uh, the ending to this Patreon movie that we don't know the title of is yet. Um, it has an ending that doesn't involve somebody just sitting on a couch. 
Correct. No, it does not. Excellent. Okay. Well, a quick question for Nathan. Um, was the director, did he, what, what was his intention with these movies? What do you mean? What was his intention? Well, do you, <laughs> I mean, do you well, think he's very defensive? <laughs> yeah. No, no, I just, I, I don't understand. Well, no, that's kind of, do you think he was trying to make a good film or he was tongue in cheek making a shitty film or he, uh, or what, what was his intention? Because it, you know, do do you think he was like a um, somebody who th- thinks he, or thought at the time he was making a good movie, or do you think no. he was no, no? And, and I watched the interviews with him on the Death Nurse mm. and Death Nurse Two, and I listened to the commentaries as well for both. Yeah, um, and I mean, he even says he's like they're definitely not meant to be taken seriously. They're over the top, mm. silly. I mean, so I don't necessarily think he was trying to make a comedy film at the time. I just think he was trying to make a campy movie, like is, not necessarily like a full on comedy, but just a really campy horror movie, which is which is fair enough, which I think is admirable. But um, it, it, you know, it's kind of like you either, you know, how intentional was the fact that it was it was so bad? It was kind of like was because, like Joseph said, you could have had some sound effects. You could have done all sorts of different things. You could have actually, you know, just endless lots of flashbacks and rehashing the first movie and the second movie shamelessly. You know what? You know, is that some kind of weird meta kind of um, cleverness, or is it just laziness? I want to say that it's meta because that's how I view it. But the director actually says in his interview for Death Nurse 2 that it was to pad out the running time so he could market it for home video. Okay. Okay. We're uh, sadly shot back to back, possibly with the intention of them being one film. Do you think? I don't think they were intention of being one film only because obviously there'd be more money into making these two films. But were they shot back to back? I think they were shot back to back, though. I mean, uh, I figured they would have to be because if you were to watch like um, these together, I mean, it feels like like Joe was saying earlier, he said it feels like they could have cut some scenes out and made this one just one long movie, like a one feature length movie, because there really isn't like a, a break there. I mean, uh, the cop, you know, goes to the door and the movie goes off and then it comes right back on for part two. And it's basically that same exact scene. Yeah, I also I don't think any of us mentioned the cop scene. Basically, the cop goes to the door and gets killed, and then he walks away and does it all over again. Yes. Well, I think that that was supposed to be <laughs> like, hey, the, the, it, here's like what happened at the end of part one, just in case you forgot. Yeah, but I mean, the, he walks up to the door and gets stabbed. I mean, we see the we see him walk up to the door at the end of part one. We see him get stabbed in the beginning of part two, and then they play him walking back up to the door again why we just saw that <laughs> running time <laughs> god that cop wasn't a very good cop either he just found dead bodies on that property and then he gets stabbed to death and once again doesn't defend himself or anything like that of course which makes me believe the cop at the end is going to die too because uh for one he doesn't have any backup even though he knows that there's you know human flesh out on the lawn being carried out by the rats you'd think he'd say okay this might this may warrant some backup he just walks up and is like i got a warrant to search the premises so she goes to sit on the couch and i guess he just wanders right in so he's he's a big as a, he's as, as big of an idiot as the original cop so i'm assuming that she will well, I mean, hey, well. this this is after the credits, right? Well, yeah, I, we got to so know what happened after there, the credits. There's my there's my after the credits. There you go. Well, shall I play the? Because uh, yes. I know Nathan's going to be itching. Yes. Don't trust the credits show. Okay. Well, at the end of this film, as Joseph has said. The cop shows up and says that the rats have brought human tissue out onto the lawn. Um, And actually, it's Edith's fault because she spread lime down there to cover up the smell and it drove the rats out. So this is what I'm thinking happened. Um, I do think the cop ended up dying because I think that Edith grabbed a knife and stabbed him and he didn't do anything but look at her and say, oh, oh, oh. Um, And then he died. Um, then I think that Edith went outside and called all the rats to come back inside and she got rid of the lime. She was like, come on, Harold and and your friends. So they came back in and she closed the garage door. 
Um, and then I think that she continued operating the clinic until the sister of Charity Chandler and Fate Chandler, Grace Chandler, shows up. And she's like, I want to know what happened to my two sisters. Meanwhile, can you check me in? Because I need to rest. So she gets checked into the um, Shady Palms Clinic. And, you know, we just kind of go through this series of adventures once again. Dun, dun, dun. I per- as far as the Chandlers, I prefer Chandler Bong. Yeah. <laughs> I preferred Faith and Charity. Yeah, surely because- her, her sister should be called Hope. Well, in Crazy Fat Ethel 2, that woman played a character named Hope Bartholomew. Oh. Well, yeah, so so there is something meta about this. Hope, faith, charity, and then I think grace is the only logical next step. I thought it would be love, like love Chandler. Well, um, that'll be next. If the movies kept getting made, I mean, you could just keep going. There would be love, honor, honor Chandler. Um, what do you think happened, Justin? Well, I think um, uh, she popped in the video cassette of um, uh, Crazy Fat Ethel 1 and 2 and watched it and videotaped it and then released it as Death Nurse 3. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. <laughs> That's what she did. Uh, yeah. That's her other way yeah. of making money. Clever. What about you, Eric? Well, Justin's kind of half stolen my idea. I was going to say that uh, either uh, after, uh, first of all, the human tissue that the detective finds is in fact just a tissue that the uh, tuberculosis patient had been using. That's there was just a bit of misunderstanding there. Um, so uh, he doesn't think that she's a murderer, and he goes off, and he's happy enough that everything's fine at Shady Palms. Then Edith uh, has another nap on that couch, as she tends to do, and she, she dreams uh, all of the entire plot of Death Nurse One. And it's released as Death Nurse 3. Yeah. I like that one. There you go. Uh-huh. Very good finales. Joseph, I imagine that you've already given yours. Do you want to add anything else? Uh, I would say that eventually Edith will be caught for real. And then she'll be sent to the electric chair, which is where I wish I were sitting right now. <laughs> It's not that bad, Joseph. This is true. I don't even it's know bad. what our, I don't even know I don't remember what our next pick is, but it has sadly, to be- sadly, um this is not the worst. these two films are not the worst films we've talked about on this show. Okay, well let's have a round table and see which was the worst film we've covered so far. What do we all think is the yeah, what do we all think is the worst film we've covered? What have you disliked the most? Joseph, you first. Um I wanna say like Hollywood's New Blood or possibly Blood Lake. Those are just – those were painful. Axum is, is awful, but I laughed a lot through Axum. I couldn't even laugh at the other two films. Nathan? Hey. Um, for me, it's a toss-up between Phantom of Soho and The Bloodstained Butterfly. I just uh, – unfortunately, I was just really bored during both of those movies. Well, speaking of boredom, for me, it would, would of course, have to be Fella Day would be up there. Even though it's a proper movie with proper production values, I was just so mind-numbingly bored throughout that film. So that's my least favorite one we've covered. Justin? Hmm. Well, I'm just trying to think, actually. Um, I probably probably would have to settle on Axum. I think partly yeah. because you, can, you, you, know, you can't hear what's being said for half the movie. This is true. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> So that's our least favorites. Yes. So Justin, I mean, I know we still got feedback and Eric's joke of the week, but please at least say, Justin, I know it's your pick next time. Hmm. Please at least say your movie is going to be better than Death Nurse 2. Well, it would have a hard job not to be better than Death Nurse 2, I think. Okay. But we have a treat Yay. coming up. And it's an early 80s, actually, or possibly late 70s slasher movie inspired by Halloween. So uh, so right back into our wheelhouse. Are we going to announce it or not? At the uh, end of the show? At the end of the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Sounds good. So um, shall we play some contact details about how to get in contact with the show? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. 
The content of this podcast was provided by Justin, Joseph, Eric, and Nathan. If you enjoy our show and are willing to provide a donation, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber at patreon.com forward slash the hysteria continues. Your monetary kindness keeps the show on the air, and in return, you'll have access to exclusive content not released elsewhere. Also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date on all of our future shows and Blu-ray commentary releases. For general feedback, our email address is the hysteria continues at gmail. Sorry, sorry. The kitten just uh, jumped on soundboard. So, <laughs> well, oh, for God's sake! Gmail dot com. Meow. Um, <laughs> we won't do it again. Anyway, gmail dot com. Um, so, yes. Well, uh, thank you for everyone who's written to the show and uh, continues to do so. And we've got a, a bit of feedback. But before we do that, shall we? Um, uh, Joseph, do you want to do the Facebook feedback? And I'm looking forward to hearing the, the glowing reviews of crazy uh, fat nurse Ethel. Uh, whatever. <laughs> you got the wrong movie. Are you sure? Yes. It's got a lot of this DNA in it. Anyway. Well, um, there's there's actually not a whole... I mean, there's a few things here. It's mostly just Nathan... Ranting and raving about these films. No, so I, I had was to responding kind of, to everyone whilst ranting and raving. But John Matthews says, "Oh my, these films thankfully never got picked up for distribution in Australia back in the VHS days, so I never saw either. Is that a blessing or a curse?" curse. Ron Ron Burgundy says, "Did we piss you guys off or something?" <laughs> no. I love all of you. That's why I picked them. Wow, you have a funny way of showing love. Anyway, Blaine Geyser says, look forward to the podcast. I've yet to see these. We'll have to hunt them down before the show. Michael Lake says, I found these movies hilarious. Nick Millard is the king of terrible shot-on-video garbage. David Cook says, you mean one death nurse nurse wasn't enough? That's a... That's a good question there, David. Obviously Matt not. Mi- <laughs> Matt Minter says, I've been quietly wishing that these would be picked so I'd have a reason to rewatch them. I feel partly responsible. Sorry, everyone. Rewatch? As in, yeah. watch them again? Well, I've seen yeah. them more than once. Yeah, wow. Lars Jacobson says, may God have mercy on your souls. <laughs> if I believed in God, Lars, I would agree. Morgan Sushek says they're both so deliciously bad. Wes Ray says, sorry, guys, I just I can't sit through that again. There's no way. I feel your pain, Wes. Mm. Uh, Josh Gratton says painful, still better than Hollywood's new blood. Yes, I would agree with you, Josh. Well, Hollywood's new blood Uh, has the cone scene. Has what? (laughs) Has the cone scene. Oh, yes, yeah. it does. <laughs> Finally, Gary Yoon says, never seen it, and even that thumbnail puts me off. Unless it's something I, unless it's something special, I always read shot on video as shit on video. <laughs> I, I would agree there. And that's all the feedback I have. <gasps> okay. It's serendipity on video. That's what I said to him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for everyone who who wrote in uh, um, on Facebook. Um, always good to hear what you think. I'd be interested to hear what you think on the next choice on the podcast. Um, but Eric, if you got some feedback, yes, I've got one here from David T. Uh, he says, "Hi, gents. Just thought I'd drop you lads a line to say thank you again for the excellent podcast. We've had some health issues in the family recently, and the podcast has kept me going on many trips to the hospital." Catching up with four of you is like heading to the pub with four great mates for some excellent banter without the pressure of joining in if you've had a bad week. Something invaluable. And the four of you should be proud that you're bringing this to people and making listeners' lives a bit better. A couple of quick questions. Uh, For those of us who weren't here from day one, can you provide a bit of background on how the podcast came about? Assuming the title is a combo of Hysteria Lives and The Body Count Continues. But how did you all meet and how did it all start? After 167 episodes of podcast hair pulling and flirting, when are Eric and Justin finally going to get it on? Oh, 
can't wait to hear what's coming next. <laughs> well, it won't be funny. Uh, all the best. <laughs> all the best from David T. And David is the editor of www.filmsfilmsfilms.co.uk. So, do you want to do you read... hear that shade? Do you hear that shade Justin threw at you, Eric? <laughs> I did. Well, I no. did. But, yeah. Well, I'd, I feel like we've... I feel like we've discussed this like a million times before, but basically Justin and I met in 98 or so, and I met Eric through Justin, and I met Nathan through my forum. So uh, I've known Justin longer than anyone else, but that's pretty much how it all came together. Yeah, I met Justin about 99 or 2000. Um, myself and Joseph were writing for Hysteria Lives occasionally, and um, Justin came up with the idea to do a podcast, and Nathan joined us on episode three, was it, Nathan? Yeah, yeah, we were covering April Fool's Day. Yes. And I didn't realize at the time it was my initiation episode. I thought I was just a guest. But then later I found out, oh, after the episode, you all agreed to let me join. And aren't you all glad that I did now? Oh, God. Yes. You remember that um, that, that, that kind of theoretical thing when they say, if you could go back and um, uh, and find <laughs> Hitler in the crib, would you kill there him? There are so many movies that you guys would not have covered if it wasn't for me. Mm. That is true, Yes. That is true. Um, I was trying to think. I can. I remember the, um, I first knew of Eric because I was um, I was considering moving to Dublin, and we we did a search to see if there are any uh, registered sex offenders nearby. Ooh. Um, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> There's a lawsuit coming your way. There's a what? A lawsuit. <laughs> well, we didn't find Eric, um, but he did write. I remember you you wrote and you were saying how much a, um, a fan of Hysteria Lives and Susie and the Banshees. And I thought, oh, he sounds like a nice chap. Little did I know. But anyway, because we've, we've got to be careful. We don't want people to see the ugly crack behind the Hysteria Continues. And uh, thankfully, uh, thankfully, this isn't a video cast and Eric hasn't got his nipples out. So far, I do have it, so. you do. Oh, but you just can't sense. Yes. see them. So, um, but yeah, 167, 168, whatever episodes. Wow, that is kind of going some, isn't it? So we, we're 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 hurtling our way through all the um, all the the glitter and the crap uh, to episode 200. So God knows where we're going to end up. And if you want us to stick around that long, uh, be sure to visit us on Patreon and become a subscriber. Indeed, and by the time this goes out, I imagine our Rafe episode will be uh, out, won't it? It'll be it'll be just around. Uh, it'll be a few days after this episode goes out, but yes, in the same month. Okay, and we had discussed. I don't know if you guys were up for it, but about um, putting out a taster episode for Patreon for people who haven't heard one yet, uh, put it on the regular feed. Yep. I thought that might be quite. We a good did. Idea. Um, we did the first episode, which was Burial Ground, but mm. we could possibly do uh, Troll 2 as well, maybe. Okay. Yeah, that could be good. That would be a good one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, actually, we could probably – it may already be out on your feed before uh, we get around to you hear this one. So, um, But, uh, yeah, is there anything else to say? We are officially uh, now – Eric's um, joke of the week. Oh, Eric's joke Eric, of the week, of course. Yes. Of course. Please, Eric, please make me laugh. It's my joke of the week. It's so, so fantastic. Why do Edith and Gordon find it so frustrating to work at Shady Palms? Because they rarely have any patience. <laughs> they rarely have any patience. Oh, come patience. on, you guys. That joke works on multiple levels. <sighs> yeah, thank you, Nathan. Because they don't have patience. You, you guys might not get it. You don't have patience because they're killing people, but they also don't have the patience to deal with their patience. That's why they kill people. Yeah. It's a multi-layered layered joke. joke. It is. So but, many layers. It's like an onion. It is. You like, and, I like, yeah. um, it's, like it's, it's like an onion, all right. Good. Yeah. It's, it's like, like an, an onion, onion makes right. you cry. <laughs> Ooh. Well, laugh till you cry. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it Shady Pines? Not Shady Palms. Oh, was it? Shady Pines was the Golden Girls' rest home. Oh, so what's Shady Palms? I don't, Shady anyway. Palms was the death nurse one. Okay. Yeah. Fair, fair enough. And Eric because has, Eric has Harry called... Palms. Harry Palms. <laughs> I, think that, 
Shady Palms, it's called that because of the palm trees. And Shades. Shady. Mm. Do you think, what, what makes you think that, Nathan? Because they filmed it in California and there's uh, palm trees there. Hmm. And do they produce shade? Yeah, I mean, if you stand up, because you know they got those big long leaves. Like palm trees are like like real small, but the top of them, oh, you know what I mean? Like, they got huge long leaves, and so they give you shade. What? Joseph's losing the will to live. <laughs> I am. And he asked me, "What did you want me to do? Ignore him?" Yes. Oh my goodness! Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I will never ignore you, Justin. I know, and I appreciate Justin, that. Justin, what is your next pick? Well, we are going back. Well, we're going to South Africa uh, for the 1979, 1980-81. It's kind of debatable when it was filmed. Need to do some um, some uh, research there. Um, is the Demon from nineteen eighty one, which is the kind of Halloween clone ish, but forward thinking or forward looking to a Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, Hmm. Set in the cinema, it has Goretta Goretta in it. Yeah? Does it? Demons? No, the, the, the demon. Is that the one where the woman in the van is like, oh, oh, when the demon's outside the van? No, that's after Night of the Demon. That's Night of the Demon. Oh. oh. The demon is the Which... one, it's got Cameron Mitchell in it and Boobs Disco. Yes. I'm it's the, 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 I'm demon. It's a, it's, there's a psychic link, isn't it? Yes. And yes. Cameron okay. Mitchell yeah. gets really kind of sweaty and starts sniffing a pillow, I think. I haven't seen it for a while. And there's a skeleton and a wig in a tree. So it's not perhaps the biggest step up in quality from uh, this episode, but I think it is a step up in quality. It is. Well, yeah. I, maybe for Death Nurse 2, but not one. Wow, you know, it's con- controversial. One of Justin's one of Justin's cat turds is a step up in quality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I'll drive away. I'm not going to dignify that minutes. with response. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for listening to this series continues, and we will be back next time with the demon. So, what are we playing out with? Is it the um, is it the Ennio Morricone score from Death Nurse? Yes, or two? from Death Nurse. Yeah, criminally ins- it's the score from criminally insane, crazy fat Ethel two, Death Nurse one, and Death Nurse two. Okay, so in other other words, um, somebody hitting uh, some pans with a ladle for forty minutes. <laughs> No, it's for one minute. <laughs> it didn't just they, feels didn't like for same opening credits sequence on Criminally Insane as they did in Death Nurse One. Yeah. <laughs> but they do have a, a a video of like a nurse hat and a bloody knife, and the video says Death Nurse Two, and it cuts to the opening credits of Criminally, Criminally Insane. Insane. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's mostly the same people. Well, they're thrifty, <laughs> very thrifty. Yeah. So, okay. Well, thank you for listening to us, and uh, we look forward to. You're welcome. Uh, no, not you. I'm talking to listeners. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Oh. All right. Say goodbye to the good people. Goodbye, good people. Uh, goodbye, good goodbye. people. I'll see you all at Shady Palms. Oh God, I got to get out of here. Bye. You need to be like me and be baked for the episodes. Oh, no, no. I'm totally proud of drinking girlish drinks. <clears throat> You're a female. Shady palms, shady palms. It's the clinic. It certainly is the clinic to be at. Everyone seems to be going there. Yeah. If you got tuberculosis, whatever you got. We didn't even mention the one guy who just sits and rants in his room until Edith can't take it anymore and just tacks him up. Yeah, I couldn't understand a word he said. He's saying something like Me that. either. I love uh, in Death Nurse as well how she'll be stabbing somebody, and because the editing is so choppy, like it cuts off their scream. It's like, ah, ah, oh, yeah. ah. <laughs> Justin, you're supposed to say, get away from there, you dang cat, and then chase it around the table. Yeah. <laughs>